Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm back with another video. Today I'm gonna to be showing you how to do acrylic nails from home. So I'm first starting off with my tips on my nail trainer. As you can see, I've cut the length down and already pre-buffed them. So I'm going in with the number zero. Zero is the biggest tip you can get in a box. Number nine is usually the smallest. Um, it can be zero to 10 or zero to nine, depending on the brand that you buy. As you can see, zero is too big. It overlaps on the sidewalls and that's not what we want. It needs to fit perfectly from sidewall to sidewall, really snug. You don't want a tip that's too small. So if you have a tip that's too small or a tip that's too big, always go for the bigger one because you can file it down to shape. A tip that's too small will just pop back up over time. For the purpose of this video, I am going to be using super glue to glue on the nails to the nail trainer. This is because it's just the only glue that I find that works to stick plastic onto plastic. You, on a normal client, would obviously use normal nail glue. You can get that from any nail supply store, uh, any sort of drug store, even eBay, Amazon, they all do them. So I'm just going to start off with sizing the rest of the tips. So as you can see now, I'm just going in with my tip cutters. These were from eBay. I think they're about three pounds. They're really inexpensive. Always make sure the blade is facing you and never your client because you can accidentally nip them. I am just going in and cutting to the desired length. I'm not cutting too much off, just below the numbers, just to make it a little bit shorter. Obviously on a normal client, you would ask uh, how, how long they want it and you would keep going back and just checking that they were all even and that that was the correct length that they wanted before going in and doing your shaping. So I'm just gonna do that on all five fingers. As you can see, one of the nails did pop off, but because it is a nail trainer, that is gonna happen sometimes. So I just re-glued it and went straight back in and did the rest of the cutting to the length. And then we go in with our NSI Jura file. This is a 100-100 nail file. I only ever use this on the nail tips and never the client's actual natural nails because it is gonna to be too rough for them. So I just go in at the side walls, making sure my file is 90, at a 90 degree angle, nice and straight, long sweeping movements. And then again, the same at the free edge. As you can see, this nail was starting to lift as well. So you do just have to put a little bit more glue on and move on to the next one whilst it dries. So again, for the index finger i do make sure that the file is nice and straight 90 degree angle at both the side walls and then again at the free edge just making sure that i get the desired shape that i want again like i said i am going for a coffin shape today so i'm just doing that until i'm really happy and then i'm going to do that on all five fingers and then we also blend the tip to the natural nail so that's where i go over where the natural nail and the tip meets it just makes it look a little bit more natural when you're putting on acrylic if you're going with a cover pink uh, or a clear you won't notice it as much and I just think it makes it look a little bit nicer so I'm going to do that on all five fingers blending the tips as I go along and then we will get onto the application of the acrylic
So I'm just going in with a straight edge nail clipper now. I think in most shops they're called toenail clippers. However, you can get these on sort of like Amazon and eBay. They're really cheap. I think I paid about two pounds for these. I'm just cutting off the corners of the side walls right at the top, not a lot, just a tiny bit, just to make sure that that coffin shape is really nice and crisp. I'm doing this on all five fingers. This is sort of like a something that I use to speed my time up. Sometimes I don't do it all the time. I should, should do really, but I don't. Um, I'm doing that on all five fingers. Again, making sure that my file is nice and straight and that I'm not taking too much off because it can change the shape really quickly. So you have to be careful. Just take your time. There's no rush, no matter how long it takes. I know some nail techs that still take three hours. I can still take three hours on a set. It's not about the time. It's about the quality of the nails that you are producing. Again, work smarter, not harder. Don't rush yourself and always be patient and you'll get some really smooth, some really nice nails. So so I'm just going to do that on all five nails and then just make sure again that all the lines are really straight and that they're really crisp and then I'm just going to get on to applying my prep stuff. So once you finish shaping the nails just turn the hand round make sure that from the client's view everything is nice and straight and nothing's at an angle. The free edge is nice and straight because that is the angle that they're going to be viewing it from. After that, I do just go in and dust off all the nails with my dust brush. I did get this off AliExpress, I think it was. I will have a nail art haul coming soon, so don't forget to click the little bell next to the subscription button just to make sure that you are notified whenever I have a new video. Now I'm just going to get started to do my acrylic. So I am going in with OPI Bond Aid. This is just my normal dehydrator that I've used since I first started doing nails. I do one coat of that on all the nails and then I go in with Young Nails Protein Bond. This stuff is amazing. You really need to check it out. So I will leave the link to their website in the description below. For this video, I'm only doing one coat, but I normally do two. I'm then taking my Young Nails Monomer and my Young Nails Cover Pink Powder. I've always used Young Nails since I started. When I was training, I used CJP and I really didn't get on with them. They're a really lovely brand and they're a great brand, but for me, it just didn't work. So always test out different brands, see what works best for you. It doesn't have to be the same as what I'm using. This will work for any brand. So as you can see, I'm just taking out my monomer and my brush. This brush is from CJP. It's the big boy brush. Please excuse the state of it. It is disgusting. I do need to get a new one. So for this, I'm just gonna start cleaning off my brush and then taking my Cover Pink acrylic powder. So I'm just gonna mix that together with the end of my dust brush, just to make sure everything's all nice. There's no pigment sitting at the bottom. Uh, I'm burping my brush in my monomer pot. I don't know if you can see that too well. This is just to get all the bubbles out of the brush and make sure that there's no bubbles in the acrylic and make sure it all looks really smooth. So for the first bead, I'm just placing that where the tip and the natural nail meet. And then I'm really angling that finger down. Leave it for a couple of seconds before you start playing with it. Just let it do its thing. So I'm really angling that finger down and making gravity do 90% of the work for me. This is the easiest way to do it. This is what I was taught and it really helped me. So as you can see, I'm not brushing, I'm sort of patting from side to side. Just going from side wall to side wall, making sure it's all nice and neat. If you do need another bead, which I did, I needed another one at the tip, then go ahead and do that. It isn't just, you have to do three balls, you can do as many as you like. So for that one, as you can see, I'm just feathering it back. It's not, again, a brushing motion. You're really not working too hard here. You don't want to put too much pressure on the nail. Just feathering it back, blending it back until it's all nice and smooth. After that, I am just going to put my brush back in the monomer, wipe it off on one side completely, and then bounce it in the powder for three seconds. Just hold it there and then take out the next bead and put that just right on top of the bead you did before. And this is going to be your second bead. And again, just feathering that down. So for the next bead, this is the cuticle bead. This is going to be the hardest one. So just make sure you wipe your brush off really well, taking out any excess liquid. You don't need a lot. That You only need to hold it in the powder for two seconds. The less liquid you have, the smaller bead you're going to get. 
So the bigger, the more liquid you have in your brush, the bigger bead you're going to get. So after three beads, you do have a really nice apex. It's not very big, but it doesn't have to be. Nails aren't meant to be super thick. So just make sure you've got a nice apex in there. If the nails were longer, I would put in a, another bead just for a bigger apex because apex is the structure of nails. So if you don't have a good foundation, they're not going to last. So always practice your foundation more and always go back to basics. I will be doing a video on liquid to powder ratio just to make it a bit more easy for people to understand if you are learning. So again, putting that bead where the tip and the natural nail meet again just blending it down on some of them you can see the bead is too wet so i am going to have to go in with another one i think it's on the one after this so i'm going in with my second bead here just blending that straight down again and then before going in with my cuticle bead so i'm just going to do that on all of the hands i'm not going to speed it up any more than it already is i if you want me to do a video in real time just leave a comment down below and i will do that for you so i'm just going to let you watch what i'm doing now i th i've tried to explain it as best i can um, and then we'll get on to the filing afterwards.
So now that we've finished all the acrylic, I'm just checking that it's dry. So as you can see here, I'm just tapping on it with a nail file. If it makes a clicking sound, then you know that it's completely dry and you can go ahead with your shaping. So I'm just going in on the side walls with that 100-100 nail file again. Again, doing it at a 90 degree angle on the side walls and the free edge, just making sure it's all completely straight and refined. I'm then going in at the sides and sort of going up and down on the sides of the nails just to contour them in a bit, just to bring them in, make it look a little bit less bulky. So I do that and then I sort of file over in small circular motions on the top of the nail to contour the nail and then go really gently around the cuticle, making sure not to cut my client's skin or to file off the apex that we've just put in there. So I'm going to do that on all of the nails, being sure not to take too much off. The nails shouldn't be thicker than debit card thickness so as long as they're like that that's perfectly fine and then i am going to go in and buff them i do buff them with a sponge buffer you can get these at any nail supply store i'm pretty sure you can get them on ebay and i don't buff them completely smooth it is just to take some of the harsh file lines out just so that they don't show through the top coat i do leave some scratches in the nail otherwise the top coat's got nothing to stick to uh, so I'm just going to go do that on all five fingers. Just to add, when you're filing the nails, always look at your nails from different angles. As you can see, I am rubbing my thumb over the nail. That's just to make sure it's nice and smooth. There's no ridges. Always look down the barrel of the nail to make sure it's all even from the side view, just to make sure that you've still got that really nice apex and from the top as well, just to make sure it's really not bulky. So always look at your nails from different angles. Always move your client's hands around. Don't ever be afraid to move your client's hands to suit the position for you better. Always do what you need to do. Again, work smarter, not harder. Just make sure that you're taking your time and that you're being patient and not rushing yourself because, again, it's not about time. It's about the quality of the nails. And if you have good nails, then the time won't matter and your client will be happy. So just make sure that you're really taking your time, not rushing yourself, and that you're producing really good quality nails. Again, just practice, practice, practice. I know that sounds really cheesy, but practice is the best way to learn. I practice every day still when I can, um, really trying to practice even liquid to powder ratio, just bead pick up because that, if you have a good foundation, that is going to be the foundation of your nails being really great and lasting a really long time. Nail art can always come in the future. If your nails are lasting a long time and you're doing a really good job and paying attention to detail, that's going to make your clients come back more.
And so once you've buffed all the nails and filed them and got the perfect shape, uh, you, this is where you could go on to gel colours. You could do any colour you want, whatever your client wanted, any nail art, any stuff like that. Uh, once you've got the base down, the possibility is really endless. It's completely up to you. For this video, I am just going in with a gel top coat. So this top coat is by Gel2. It's their no cleanse top coat. I got this at Olympia Beauty last year and I really love it. It's perfect for doing chromes and flakes and stuff like that. Um, as you can see, I am wiping down the sides of the nails after I'm done just to get off any excess and make sure that it's all nice and neat. Really scrubbing it into the nail, uh, really working it up to the cuticle and then pulling it down and then doing that on the side walls as well. Just making sure that I'm filling in any ridges and stuff like that and then I will cure that for 60 seconds. So once that's cured, that is our nails finished. I really want to thank every one of you for watching this video today and helping my channel grow. And also thank you to the 800 and I think 63 people that have liked my page on Instagram. That is maybe a small number to some people, but for me, that is a massive number. I was only at 400 a couple of days ago. So it's just incredible to think that 800 people like my page. So thank you so much. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. That helps me know if you're liking the videos I'm recording for you. And then don't forget to click the bell notification to know when I upload another video. Thanks for watching today and I hope you're all staying safe and I'll see you in the next video.